Hey everybody, this is Brian here. I'm awake, are you? And you are definitely awake if you're watching this channel because we are in the last of the last days of humanity as we know it. The pre-trib rapture is about to happen. We do not know the day or the hour. You will never hear that on this channel, but we know it's very close by the events that are happening. And there's some events happening every day. And there's one we're gonna look at today that's right out of the pages of the Old Testament which we're going to start with here in a minute. And every day, every time I do a podcast, every time I'm doing a video I, or I turn on the television or look at my phone to check on the stuff that's going on in the world is just amazing to watch. It really is. We're, I hope we're not getting used to it because saints, this is all pointing to the beginning of the trip, which we're gone before that. So we see stuff going on every day. It's unbelievable what's going on. I mean, if you're having a bad day right now, I know the East Coast, you're three hours ahead of me here on the, the left coast. Um, I, what time is it here? It's a little after 10. So what's there, one o'clock? You know, your day's been going on for a while. Uh, if you're having a bad day or here on the West Coast or anywhere in the world, pull over and you're in your car, in your home, go to a quiet place and just give it to God. Who else are you going to give it to? You can tell your friends and your family and your spouses, which is a good thing to do sometimes if you can trust them. But the best person you can give all your junk to is God. Jesus said his yoke is light. His yoke is easy. Cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. He can handle it. You know, when you talk to some people, we uh, call them Debbie Downers because they're always bringing us down from all the stuff going on in their life. And it just drains you. We call them emotional vampires. You cannot drain the Lord. You cannot tire him out. You cannot wear him out from hearing what's going on in your life. And not only can you not wear him out, but he has the resources and the power to help you in your life like no other person. Why does it take so long to go to him? I don't know. I sometimes I wait and I wait and wait. And finally, I go to prayer. I should have went prayer in the first place. As soon as whatever situation happened, I should have went then. But no, I wait. I keep waiting and waiting. Why do I wait? Because I'm trying to fix it myself. Maybe that's part of it. The other part is we just get involved in this world and it takes our mind off with what's really going on. We are in a spiritual battle. We are living in the last days of humanity. And you have to know that the spirit realm that we can't see is ablaze with battles and they're battling over you and over me and on the unsaved so they won't get saved and they're battling over us the believers so we won't speak the gospel and what is the gospel today what is the good news for today you won't hear this on fox or you won't hear this on cnn but the good news today is that jesus christ died buried and rose again on the third day his blood his body his sacrifice paid for your sin we are all born into sin and God cannot allow sin in his presence. So he sent a sinless sacrifice called his son who lived a sinless life for 33 years and then died on that cross. And on the third day, he rose from the grave in power and victory. You put faith in that, believe that, ask him to come into your heart. And you'll be saved. Saved from what? Well, for once, saved from eternity in hell and pain and sorrow, separation from God, family and friends for eternity, that's a big one. And if you get saved and God is calling you today to do that, I implore you, I, I'll beg you if I could, you need to do it. You need to do it because there's no time. I don't care how old you are, you can be 18 years old watching this. You step out the door, you don't know if you have another minute. None of us know. So, but God has given us a way to come before his throne, access through Jesus Christ. It's the only way to get to God's throne is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And a lot of us on this channel have already done that. And we are now looking for the pre-tribulation rapture happen at any moment. And the things I want to talk about today, I'm going to pick one subject. And there's many. There is definitely many subjects. But uh, let's just look at this one right here, right now. Um... We're going to start right here. We're going to start with an article. And this is allisraelnews.com. It says here, Axis of Ezekiel 38, question mark. 
Turkish President Indoran calls for Russia, Iran, Turkey, Syria alliance against Israel. I'm going to read this again because I'm going to go a little further with this. Axis of Ezekiel 38, Turkish President Indoran, I think I pronounced that right, calls for Russia, Iran, Turkey, Syria alliance against Israel. I hear people say to me sometimes, not everything is, you always see the stuff's in the Bible. Where's that in the Bible? Let's, let's, uh, let's go there right now. Actually, let me see here. Let's go. It says right here, Ezekiel 38. Actually, I'm going to back up. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to read you some names, modern names of countries that are in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Okay, Rosh is Russia or chief. Magog, Central Asia and Russia. Meshek, Turkey. We just read about Turkey. Tobol, Turkey, also Southern Russia and Iran. This is out of Ezekiel 38, 39. Persia, Iran, Ethiopia, Sedan, Put, Libya, Gormer, Gormer Turkey again, Beth, Togramoth, I think I pronounced that right, Turkey, and then many peoples with them, which would be possibly Iraq, Syria, Jordan, and Egypt. My question to you today, are any of these countries in the news right now? Now, let's read the scriptures. And the word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel 38, starting at verse 1. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog, the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. And prophesy against him and say, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against you, O Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws and I will bring, I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them splendid or tired, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them wielding swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and put with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer with all its troops, Beth Beth Tomagrama, I think I spelled that right, pronounced it, from the remote parts of the north with all its troops, many peoples with them. Now, let's go back to that article. Israel, all Israel news. Axis of Ezekiel, Turkish president, calls for Russia, Iran, Turkey, and Syria alliance against Israel. Turkish president told local media on Saturday that Russia, Iran, and Syria should do more to protect Syria's territorial integrity. It is essential that Russia, Iran, and Syria take more effective measures against this situation, which poses the greatest threat to Syria territorial integrity, said uh, Turkish president when asked about the recent alleged Israeli airstrikes in the nation's capital of Damascus. Hmm, is this Bible prophecy? Hmm. I think so. I know so. I just read our article, read the modern names of these countries, read the scripture and read the article again. Bible prophecy is is on the news every single day. You want to read Bible prophecy? Follow the news for a few days. What is all this leading to? This situation is leading to Ezekiel 38 and 39, an invasion of the Middle East into Israel in the future. We are out of here. We are out of here really soon. Could we see this? Maybe. Probably not, but could. I, I'm not going to say no. It could happen right before the rapture, right before the tribulation, right before the rapture. Who knows? Is this setting up to happen right now? Think about it. As you go along in your day to day, wherever you are in this world, whatever you're doing, think about with this, this passage I just read in this article, just this one article. Are we in the end times? And if you believe we're in the times, how should we be reacting to what's going on in the world? 
Let's look at that. Let me see here. Hold on a second, guys. I'm going to read two passages for you. First one is Philippians 3, starting at verse 7. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in the view of surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish or garbage, so that I may gain Christ. Verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Verse 12, not that I have already obtained or have already become perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward, to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. <sighs> There's so much here. You can tend sermons on this few passages here. <sighs> I'm going to see something here. Here it is. Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. If you look back, you know what happens when you're looking back, when you're hiking or walking, you're going to trip and run into somebody or something. But why do us, me included, look back what happened in our life 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 5 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, it doesn't matter. We look back and we run right into the present. You can't live for the Lord in a full capacity of what God has called us to do if we keep looking behind at our mistakes. Or somebody hurt us, somebody did this, somebody did that. I get it. You've been hurt emotionally, maybe physically. That's horrible. I'm sorry that happened to you. I really am. I am really am. A lot of abuse out there. But you're alive still. You're here for a reason still. Why? Why are you here? Believer, I'm talking to born again believers right now. The church. If you're bought and paid for by God Almighty and sealed by the Holy Spirit and God's going to redeem us at the rapture if we don't die first, then what in the world are you doing here and what am I doing here? We're just taking up space on a shelf? We're just a sh uh, just a, an item God's got on a shelf. We blow the dust off once in a while and takes a look at it. Yeah, that's my child. Not doing anything lately, but that's him or her. If you're alive and you're watching this, there's a reason for it. And it's not just to sit. Verse 8, back to verse 8. More than that, I count all things to be lost in the view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but as rubbish that they may gain Christ. Whatever we gain in this world or whatever we've lost in this world is garbage. It's dung compared to what is waiting for us at the trumpet and after. That's why Satan reminds us he's called the accuser of the brethren. Look, look at Brian did. Look, he did this, Lord. He did that. He did this. He did that. He accused Job in heaven right before God's throne, just railing Job, railing Job, Job. And you know what happens? Our advocate who's in heaven, who sits at the right hand of God, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior. Yep, Brian did those things. Oh, but it's already been paid for. It's already done. No charges are going to be brought against him. He's a free man. I'm a free man. You're a free man and a woman of God because of what Jesus has done at the cross. And the things of this world, 
are considered rubbish and garbage compared to knowing Christ. And Satan wants to remind us of the garbage. He wants us to look backwards. God's calling us not to... You know what God's calling us to do? God's not calling us to look forward. He's calling us to look up. He's not calling us to go this way. He's calling us to go that way. Because when your eyes are on the Lord and your thoughts are on heavenly things, going forward is automatic. You're going forward with the Lord, but you don't even realize it because you're following him. The three wise men, Christmas is coming up, followed the star. Were they looking forward for Christ or were they looking up? We look, we look, Back too much? Way too much. I know I do. We look forward too much? What are the goals for Brian today? What is Brian going to do today? No. God, what do you have for me today? What do you have for you today out there? Today is a gift. Today is a gift. You're breathing air. It's a gift. A believer. It's a gift. But I, I don't, I'm at home. I do this. I do that. We're so programmed, everybody wants to, not I shouldn't say everybody, to be out front. Look at me. Look at this. Look at that. I do this for a living. I do that for a living. A humble, uncontrite heart, God will not despise. Opening a door for somebody, you know, you know God sees that? Letting somebody else have the parking spot, even though you were there first, you think God sees that? Giving a cup of water in his name, is his reward not great in heaven? This is the stuff that God's called us as believers to do every single day. But we miss it. We get all involved in all this drama in our life or just life. And we forget. I do. Maybe I'm the only one. But I forget. Oh, yeah. We're in a spiritual battle. That thing that just happened to me, that wasn't that guy or that person. That was a demon trying to derail my day. And now I just read an article and then I read the countries right out of the Bible that were in that article. They're aligning together and there's a threat of World War III all over the news right now. Israel's about to attack Iran. They're already in a war in seven fronts. Everything's going crazy out there, cray cray, Every, everything's chaos, everything is chaos. But the church of God, we are a rock. Why? Because Jesus is the rock. He's the cornerstone. He's the foundation stone of our faith. That's why we don't have to be moved. That's why we don't have to be scared. That's why we don't have to worry about what's going to happen because he told us what's going to happen before it happens. So when it does happen, we know it's him and we're okay. Because the rapture of the church is about to happen any moment. That's the truth. You want real truth? That's the truth. Our Heavenly Father is going to send His Heavenly Son to come down and get His heavenly people. Very soon. I love you guys. I was going to do a longer video, but I got a short, uh, busy day today. You know what? You see this stuff like I just read? What's the Bible say? What's John tw uh, Luke 21 say when you see what I just read? Look up for redemption draws nigh. I'll see you in the clouds. It's your brother Brian out. Bye, guys.